Welcome to Crosstalk Solutions. My name is Chris, and today we have a really, really fun video for you. We're going to do a complete Unify infrastructure setup from start to finish. So, what do I mean by that exactly? Well, uh, basically, what I mean is we are going to get all three bubbles in Unify green, and we're going to do that from scratch. Uh, I know that uh, we've talked about this a lot in the past with the USG and the Unify switches. And, uh, and having these three bubbles in Unify, everyone wants to see all three bubbles lit up. So we're gonna go ahead and do that today. And so let's take a look first at what equipment we have and what we're working with. So everything that I have is set up right here. Uh, I have a USG, a standard USG. The internet is plugged into the WAN port. And now when I say the internet, it's actually coming off of a uh, my edge router light over here, but in your case, if you're setting this up for your own home network or your own small business network, your internet connection uh, from the modem of the ISP is going to plug directly into the WAN port of the USG. Then plugged into the LAN port, I have a US8150 watt. So this is the Unify Switch 8 port 150 watt version and I have it going from the LAN port of my USG over to port one in the eight port switch. Uh, I then also have off of the eight port switch a UAP AC Pro access point. And I also have off of the eight port switch a Ubiquiti cloud key. Uh, finally, the last thing I have plugged in to the eight port switch is my computer right here. And so the first thing we're gonna do is factory default all of this equipment. It's set up and working right now, but we're gonna factory default everything so that we can start from scratch and go from there. Now, if you are looking to set up this same setup for your own business or your home, and you haven't purchased all of the equipment yet, I'm gonna put links to everything that I used in this video down in the description of the video. Uh, now, these are Amazon affiliate links. They are using my affiliate code. So if you got some value out of this video and you would like to purchase your products and give me a little bit of a tip, if you will, for the effort of creating the video, I would certainly appreciate if you use my Amazon affiliate links down below. It's not gonna cost you anything uh, different. It'll, you'll pay the same price on Amazon whether you buy through my affiliate link or not, but it gets me, I think it's like 3% or 4% of the purchase price uh, just for uh, using that affiliate link, and I certainly would appreciate that. Okay, so without further ado, let's move on to factory defaulting all of this equipment. Okay, so you get your factory default tool, the old paper clip, and we're going to start with the AC Pro. Basically, when you're factory defaulting anything, you just wanna hold in the reset switch for about 10 seconds and then you're good to go. I'm gonna do the cloud key next. Okay, so everything has been factory defaulted. Um, the, w when these are in factory default state, the LED, if you can see that, the LED on the device is going to be solid white. So when they're adopted, the LED is solid blue, but when they're ready for adoption or they're in a factory default state, they are solid white. So once you have all of your devices plugged in and all of the devices are solid white, you know that you are at a factory default state. Now, if we look at my ping here, if I ping uh, 8.8.8.8, .8 we can see that I already have internet, right? So even though everything's factory default, everything's working perfectly. Um, uh, with the internet. So if you don't have internet access, uh, you want to set your computer to DHCP, right? So that it will automatically receive an IP address from the USG, uh, even if you haven't done any configuration to the USG yet. By default, the USG starts at 192.168.1.1, okay? So as long as you are on DHCP, your computer will get an IP address in that same network and it will have internet access, assuming that your internet is also DHCP. Okay, so let's take a look at our drawing again. So this is what I'm talking about here. So here's my internet. My internet is DHCP. Most people's internet at home are DHCP, but you might have a static IP address as well. So the first thing we wanna do is let's log into the USG's interface directly, and I will show you where to set up DHCP versus a static internet IP address. 
Okay, so bring up your browser and go to 192.168.1.1. Uh, get past the connection is not private messages. And here we go. So this is the very simple USG setup. This just allows us to configure our internet connection. So here we have, uh, if I say edit, uh, we got DHCP or static or PPPoE if you're using uh, DSL or a PPPoE connection. And then uh, for my case though, I'm just gonna leave it on DHCP. Now, uh, again, this is a LAN IP address because I'm bringing this off of a separate interface of my edge router. Uh, but you would likely have a, an actual internet IP address here uh, if you are running this right off of your ISP's modem. Okay, so 192.168.1.1. Keep in mind also uh, that in my drawing here, I'm going to be setting the network to a different subnet. So by default, we're at 192.168.1.0 slash 24, but I'm actually gonna change it to 192.168.99.0 slash 24. So we'll get to that in a little bit. But the next thing that we wanna do is find our cloud key on the network and start configuring the cloud key. Because the cloud key is what's gonna tie all of these devices together. That is our unified controller. Okay, so how do we find the cloud key? Uh, in my case, I have the Ubiquity Discovery Tool or the UBNT Discovery Tool. This is a Google Chrome plugin that you can use. So install the Google Chrome plugin for UBNT Discovery. Click on it and it's gonna search through your network for Unify devices. Now this is gonna find Ubiquity devices on this page by default, but if I click Unify family in the upper right hand corner, I'm gonna see all of my Unify devices. Now also, if I click find cloud key, it finds my cloud key. So there we go, it just popped right in. My cloud key is configured to 192.168.1.9, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on that IP address. Get past the warnings again, and here we go. So we can see my cloud key is currently the latest version, 5.3.8. Uh, I'm just gonna click Manage, and we're gonna go into the Unify Setup Wizard. Okay, so select your country, United States, Pacific Time, Enable Auto Backup, this is perfectly fine. We're gonna click Next. And then look, it already found all of my devices. So which devices, select the devices you'd like to configure. I'm just gonna select them all. UAPAC Pro, USG, and the Unify Switch 8. Then we're gonna say next. Okay, configure Wi-Fi. So we're gonna create a Wi-Fi network. Uh, we'll call it Wi-Fi Faux Fum. Uh, security key one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we're gonna check the box to enable a guest SSID, which we're gonna call guest. All right, next, admin name. So this is for logging into Unify controller. We're gonna call, well, I'm gonna call it Sherwood. That's what I use for all of my Unify controllers. Admin email, and I'm gonna give it a password. Okay, and use the same name for password and SSH access, that's totally fine. Go ahead and click next. Please enter your Ubiquity account credentials to enable cloud access. So this, if you have a Ubiquity single sign-in login, this will allow you to tell the cloud key to basically upload all of its information or connect outbound to Ubiquity's cloud-hosted Unify services that are at unify.ubnt.com. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect it up. So my email is Okay, and we're gonna say next. Okay, please review the settings below, blah, 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 great, finish. Okay, so here we have Unify, I'm gonna log in with the credentials that I just created. And update data retention, we're just gonna say apply. 30 days is fine. And there we go, look at that. We've got all three bubbles lit up. Boom, 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 we love it. Okay, so now let's start configuring our devices. So if I click on the devices tab, or the devices uh, section here, uh, the first thing I want to do is name all my devices, right? So I don't like seeing the MAC address as the device name. So we're going to actually give them the name of the model number. So this is going to be the US8150 watt. Save that. Then we've got our USG configuration. USG, save that. And then we've got our access point, which is the configuration UAP AC Pro and we're gonna save that. 
At this point, my Wi-Fi network should be up and running. Uh, let me just verify that on my phone. And yes, so on my phone, I see the Wi-Fi faux fum network. I also see a guest network. Both of those are coming off of my UAP AC Pro right here. So everything's connected. Um, the one thing that I don't like is that everything is currently set to DHCP. So if we go back to my diagram, there's a few things we need to do now. We need to set all of these devices statically, right? So I want to know where these devices are on my network. So I'm going to set the USG LAN port to 192.168.99.1. I'm going to set the 8 port switch to 192.168.99.2. And I'm going to set the cloud key to 192.168.99.3. That way I know where all of those devices are on the network. I'll never lose them again. Um, the access point itself, though, this I can remain DHCP. I don't care about that. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is set up our network. So let's go back into Unify. Close out these side windows here. And we're going to click on Settings. And then we're going to click on Networks. And then we want to edit the corporate network. And we're going to change this to 192.168.99.1 slash 24. We're also going to click this button to update our DHCP range. That's going to match that same subnet. But I'm also going to come down here to the DHCP server and I'm going to change this up a little bit because I don't like the default DHCP range. We're going to go to 192.168.99.100 through 254. That's plenty of addresses and uh, I have uh, plenty of statics as well as plenty of dynamically assigned addresses for my network. Okay, the next thing we're going to do, if we look at our DHCP name server, we're going to set our DNS uh, name servers uh, manually. Just again, this you can leave it on automatic if you want. I like to set it manually, and I'm going to set the first name server to the USG, so 192.168.99.1, and the second name server I'm going to choose a public uh, name server of 8.8.8.8. .8 All right, now we're going to save this information. The IP address of the USG is going to change, okay? Which means that the IP address of all of our other devices that are still DHCP will also have to be refreshed. So this is where I like to have my persistent ping up and running. So I'm going to say ping-t 8.8.8.8. That's basically pinging me out to the internet so that I can see as things change, I'll know when my internet actually comes back. So I'm going to apply this change, save. And now if I go back to devices, I should see that the USG is provisioning. And then I'm kind of going to lose connectivity here. So I want to reboot the cloud key and I want to reboot the switch, and I want to reboot the access point so that when they come back up, they get new IP addresses in the new network of 192.168.99.0 24. Okay, so I'm gonna reboot those now. Uh, I'm also gonna refresh the um, my own computer's uh, internet connection. Okay, so uh, we see that my computer now has an IP address 192.168.99.100. That's perfect. That's the first IP address in the new DHCP range that I just set up. I'm going to try pinging the internet. I should have it already. 8.8.8.8. And I have internet access once again. So now we need to find my Unify controller. Um, actually, I need to reboot the Unify controller. So we're going to unplug the cloud key and plug it back in. I'm also going to unplug my Unify switch and plug it back in. And finally, I'm going to actually, you know, I could have just unplugged the Unify switch because that would have also powered off the cloud key, uh, and I'm also and uh, it did power off the uh, the UAP Pro as well. So don't need to reboot everything. Just unplug your PoE switch, and that'll take care of the rest of the devices. Okay, so my Unify switch is now blue, which means it's back up. The next thing that's going to come back up are my cloud key and the access point. So we'll just wait another minute or so for those to come up, and then uh, we should be able to be good to go to find the cloud key again which should now be in the 192.168.99 network. <clears throat> and then we will statically set the IP address for the cloud key, the switch, and, uh, and that should be it. Okay, so the cloud key and the access point are up. Everything is now solid blue LED. So I'm gonna run my Ubiquiti device discovery tool one more time. Uh, let me close this out and rerun it. And let's see what it comes up with here. So it found my USG, let's see if uh, it found my switch, it found my AC Pro, so notice that those are now 99.101 and 99.103, 
That means that the cloud key is probably 99.102, but let's click find cloud key and see if we can find it. I've seen it where it doesn't find the cloud key the second time around, and it looks like it's not doing it. But um, if my computer got assigned .100, the switch is 101, and the AC Pro is 103, so we can kind of assume that the cloud key is sitting out there at 102. So I'm going to put 192.168.99.102 into my browser, and there is our cloud key. So we're just going to say advanced, proceed. <clears throat> And now I first want to set this cloud key statically. So if we look at our diagram again, I have the cloud key at 192.168.99.3. So instead of going into unify, I'm going to go into the configure your cloud key, configure. Okay, so it had actually taken my, uh, the information that I set up for the unify controller, the credentials that I set up for the unify controller. So once we are into the cloud key, we're going to click on maintenance. Sorry, we're gonna click on configuration. And then under network settings, we're gonna say static IP. And we're gonna say 99.3. Netmask is good, gateway is good, DNS uh, settings are also good. And we're gonna apply those changes. And now we need to switch over to the new IP address of 192.168.99.3 in the browser get past the privacy errors again. And here we are back with our Unify controller on its own IP address. So we're gonna say manage for Unify controller and log in. Okay, so here we go. All three bubbles are lit up. Let's look at our devices again and what's next. So we have our cloud key at 192.168.99.3. Uh, the UAP AC Pro is all set up and done. This is on DHCP, so I don't need to touch this anymore. My Wi-Fi should be working perfectly. The last thing we need to do is set a static IP address for the Unify switch. So let's do that next. We're going to click on my Unify switch. I'm going to click Configuration. And under Network, we're going to say Configure IP Static IP. And we're going to give it the IP address of 192.168.99.2 with 255.255.255.0, Gateway 192.168.99.1, Preferred DNS 192.168.99.1. Oops, I missed a dot down here. Dot one. Alternate DNS 8.8.8.8. .8 and we're going to queue changes and apply changes. Okay, and now it has come back. Uh, there's a little bit of loss of connectivity while the switch is provisioning because I've got my computer, the cloud key, and the uh, access point all plugged into that switch. But just give it about a minute and everything comes back fine. The last thing that I'm going to want to do, uh, if you notice, I've got upgrades available for all of my devices. So I'm going to go ahead and run through and click upgrade on these devices one at a time and get them all up to the latest and greatest version. Okay, so there we have it, a complete Unify setup start to finish. All of our bubbles in the Unify controller are green. That's going to satisfy everyone's OCD about making sure that all their bubbles are green and not gray. And again, if you are looking to set up this Unify configuration, this exact same Unify infrastructure, all of the links to these products are in the description below. And those are my Amazon affiliate links. I certainly would appreciate if you are going to purchase this equipment to use my affiliate link. Okay, so thank you so much. My name's Chris with Crosstalk Solutions. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please click subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.